Hi, I'm Annie. Today I'm going to talk yet again about this horrible tension between NE and SI and this problem that keeps reoccurring in my life. If you like content about NE and SI, follow me because that's pretty much all I ever talk about. It's like the same problem over and over again. So here's a huge pet peeve of mine. When people think it's lame and uptight to follow safety rules. This is just common sense stuff. It's not about being controlled. It's not about liberties being taken away. It's just like basic safety. This came up recently in our house, there was an incident. This is Lady Poppy. She's a daddy's girl. And her daddy lets her hang out in the kitchen and beg. During dinner prep, she's in the middle of the floor. She's snuggled up in between your legs while you're trying to cut things at the chopping board. She'll just spread out and fall asleep right in the middle of the kitchen floor while you're trying to cook. And it is not a big kitchen. She's always underfoot and it's fucking dangerous. You're moving from station to station. There's sharp things. There's incredibly hot things. There shouldn't be a dog in the kitchen. Imagine that you are taking a molten hot apple pie out of the oven and you drop it on your bare feet. Sound fun? Imagine you drop a molten hot apple pie on your sweet baby puppy. In commercial kitchens, it's required that you wear closed-toed shoes. It makes sense. You know, you wear shoes in the kitchen for safety reasons because there's a lot of hot stuff, there's a lot of knives. Now, of course, in our own homes, we don't do that. We often are barefoot, maybe, or wearing flip-flops in the kitchen. I wear sandals in the kitchen all the time. That is a personal risk that I assume for myself. If anything bad happens, if I drop boiling water on my feet, it's my fault. And it hurts me, mostly. It hurts my family a little bit because it puts me out of commission if I'm so badly injured that I can't work or help out around the house. But it's basically a personal risk that I assume. Pretty normal. A lot of us wear sandals in the kitchen. But to allow a dog in the kitchen, that's just fucking crazy. Because you're putting them at risk and they're too innocent to know better. So it's not a personal risk you're assuming. You're putting your dog in jeopardy by allowing them into a dangerous situation. It's not against the law to have a dog in the kitchen. It's just a really bad idea. It's impractical. It's unsafe. It's just dumb. It is your responsibility to keep the dog safe. It's not fair to allow this sweet, fluffy little thing to do dangerous things. And this is a point of contention between my partner and I because he's always let her be in the kitchen. She's about a year and a half old and it's just a bad habit. If you're standing at the cutting board, then she'll get like between your legs and snuggle up and just let you know how much she loves you and she's just there for you if you need her to eat any of your snacks or if you accidentally drop something on the floor she's right there ready to clean it up and she just loves you so much just snuggling up against your legs while you're standing at a cutting board with a sharp knife in your hand. I've voiced my concern about this many times and I've told him like it's just crazy that you allow her to do that like she's young right now she should be trained properly to just not be in the kitchen while we're working. So if I tell Lady Poppy to get out of the kitchen then I'm the bad guy because he lets her do it. So it's like this good cop, bad cop thing. Cedar Wolf doesn't come into the kitchen. That's my, my other poodle. He's 11 years old and he knows that he's not allowed in the kitchen because he's my dog and that's how I trained him. Well, the other day there was an incident. Sweet Lady Poppy was in the kitchen as usual and Russ was making pasta for dinner and he took the pasta from the burner, the, you know, hot salty water and he went to the sink and he was pouring it into the strainer, you know, over the sink. He, he wasn't doing anything wrong. It was safe. The way that he was pouring the water out. And Lady Poppy was right down there at his side, sitting on the floor right under the sink. And while the water went through the strainer and it splashed on the side of the porcelain of the sink and jumped out and landed right in her eye, like hot, scalding water right in her eye. And she screamed and she ran out of the room, ran out of the doggy door. We stopped what we were doing and we rushed after her to, you know, investigate and, and see how bad the damage was. And it wasn't immediately clear. The eye was kind of a little bit red, not too bad but she was you know touching it she was irritated we ate dinner very late that night because we were just comforting her something terrible just happened to her she's innocent she didn't know what went wrong what could have gone so terribly wrong to hurt her in that way when she's just going about her normal business she doesn't know that it's dangerous or wrong to be in the kitchen because nobody taught her so we were comforting her and just looking after her and looking at her eye to make sure it wasn't too bad and over time it swelled up more and more you know at first there wasn't much swelling but the swelling developed over time 
time. And the next day the eye was swollen shut. And I was just so mad and sad. It was, it was really sad. It's our responsibility to protect her. And I felt incredibly guilty about it even though it wasn't my fault. I told him a million times, don't let the dog in the kitchen while you're cooking. It's just so obvious. It's just common sense. The dog should not be in the kitchen while you're cooking. We failed her. It's our responsibility to keep her safe and that didn't happen and it's our fault. And I kept playing this scene over and over in my head and just hearing her scream and you know I hate that sound when she's in pain for some reason. It's only happened a couple times in her life when you know something has happened where she's been really scared or been in actual pain and the way that she screams it's just an awful awful sound and I can't stop like replaying that sound in my head and just reimagining just the horrific nature of the accident of hot water coming into her eye. And I think Russ felt more guilty than me. Um, he was just kind of, you know, nervous and sick for days after this happened. It was just a horrible, horrible thing. Now she is okay. The eye is fine. It's fine now. It just, it looked awful. She looked like a boxer, just like totally fucked up. Russ took her to the emergency vet and they actually put the ultraviolet dye or whatever, the dye, I don't know what it is, dye that they put in the eye and then they look at it with the UV light so you can see if there's any damage. The eye was fine. It was just like scalded and, and swollen all the way around. This took like, you know, 10 days to start to look at her. It was really awful. Like every day we kept wanting to see improvement, but it just wasn't improving. The doctor gave an antibiotic ointment, but also that ointment had a steroid in it. And that's what really helped with reducing the swelling. And she's really doing fine right now. She's going to be fine. And I said, okay, we're going to have new kitchen rules now. No more dogs allowed in the kitchen. It's not okay. Bad things can happen. Bad things might not happen, but they are more likely to happen if the dog's in the kitchen. It's just a chaotic situation. Any way that we can reduce the chaos in the kitchen is a good thing. And Russ agreed, but then the first night that we were trying to enforce the rule, it just didn't go that well. I would tell Poppy to get out of the kitchen and Russ would do this whole thing, like telling Poppy, like, oh, your mommy's so uptight. She's a bad mommy. Like, it's excessively uptight and anxious to have like basic rules that keep shit organized. And that really pissed me off. I shut that down right away. I mean, that's what he always does. Anytime I'm trying to create some sort of structure and organization and keep things safe, he implies that I'm uptight. And a lot of people do that. Like, oh, you're so lame. Like, why do you use your turn signals every time? That's so stupid. It's like, that's so square. It's like, just fucking try to be safe. Like, what is the problem with mitigating chaos? Like, there's a lot of chaos everywhere and we shouldn't be excessively anxious about it. But if there are good, solid rules that we can use to mitigate the chaos, then why wouldn't we? That is such a stupid thing to rebel against, you know? Like, it's so childish. Like, rebel against something more meaningful. Dodge the draft or something. Or, you know, like, be a conscientious objector or refuse to pay taxes if you don't like the way the money's spent. But, like, turn signals? Like, come on! Like, it's so cheap and easy to use turn signals and the consequence of not using them is just, like, adds more chaos to the world and is actually expensive, you know? Even, like, a minor fender bender is gonna make your insurance premium go up. So, like, why wouldn't you? I just do not understand it. It is so fucking childish to me to rebel against those kinds of rules. Find something way more valuable to rebel against. So anyway, he was doing this whole stupid thing, making fun of me, and I shut that down right away, talked to him again, and he agreed that this was really important because I he did feel terrible. I know he felt incredibly guilty about it. Well, this is the answer. You can't be safe 100% of the time or keep your dog safe 100% of the time, but you can do the things that you can do. Like, why not just do the little things that are going to help to mitigate chaos and keep people safer? So as soon as he was on board and we were united against Poppy being in the kitchen, she learned super fast. It took like two days for her to learn because she's really, really smart. And so now she still gets to beg. She just like sits on the back of the couch with her, her feet over the back. And if Russ is at the cutting board, like um, carving up the steak or chicken or something, then, you know, he throws her some. So she still gets to beg. She still gets a snack but she's not in the kitchen fucking shit up. But this incident really got my anxiety going because, you know, bad things can and do happen all the time, but I try to just tune that out. Having this lead any 
I can really think of a lot of terrible possibilities. You never want to ask someone with lead NE, what's the worst that could happen? Because, you know, the, the NE brain will just jump in and just think of millions and millions of possibilities. So for me, I have to kind of block that stuff out. Now, I'm always aware of and on the lookout for ways that I can use SI to control the chaos. I'm always slightly aware of all of the possibilities, good and bad, and I'm always a little bit more aware than a lot of people of how SI can control that chaos. It's very comforting to have procedures and structure and safety rules to keep the chaos at bay. And from an evolutionary perspective, like that's valuable. You need someone in the tribe who can do that. You need someone in the tribe that's slightly leaning towards brainstorming the bad possibilities so that you can do these preemptive steps to protect yourself from some of that chaos. And of course it can get out of proportion, you know, when you're just all in on that anxiety and just constantly brainstorming all the bad shit that could go wrong, that's not good. And if you have that lead in E and the SI fourth, then sometimes the SI gets like really anxious and exaggerated and is trying to over control the environment way too much in sort of a, you know, fixated, neurotic, psychotic way. And that's out of balance. But there's like a nice healthy balance of sort of lightly and loosely brainstorming some of the negative possibilities and being aware that things can and do go wrong and putting just like basic common sense measures in place to mitigate that chaos. What's the big deal? Like they are there to help. They're not trying to over control you or take away your freedoms. It's just like basic common sense shit. So I was thinking about all this and just, you know, thinking about how triggering it is to me when people think that I'm lame or uptight for using turn signals or other things like that. And yesterday his client showed up to my massage therapy office here and it was raining pretty hard and he had an umbrella, huge big black umbrella. And I opened the door to let him in and he put his umbrella upside down, you know, so it was like catching the rain and he was just going to leave it outside, just like leave the umbrella outside. And I think maybe he was just trying to be polite. Like, I don't want to bring this big wet umbrella into your office. I was like, no, no, come on, bring, bring the umbrella in. You can just close it and bring it in because I, I think it might blow away. And he was so surprised. Like, really? Like, you think the umbrella is going to blow away? I mean, if you leave an umbrella upside down outside and you walk away from it for an hour, what do you think is the likelihood that the umbrella is still going to be in the same place? I mean, umbrellas catch wind so easily. I don't think it's very likely at all that that umbrella would still be there in an hour. I mean, even like a really light breeze could just blow the umbrella away and then he would lose the umbrella. And plus, like, why was it upside down? <laughs> like, it was just going to like get super wet and catch a bunch of rain in that position. So it just didn't make any sense. But anyway, as soon as I noticed that he was going to leave it out there, my mind immediately, just like in an instant, imagined the umbrella getting picked up by the wind and blown into the busy street. There's a very trafficy street that's just uh, maybe six yards away. And this foreign object would blow into traffic and create a huge fatal pile up. Just that fast. My brain sees an umbrella and just that fast I jump to the worst case scenario. Now maybe no one would die <laughs> if you left the umbrella outside. I mean that's the worst case. It's like you leave an umbrella outside and then it causes a fatal car wreck and a bunch of people die. That is the absolute worst case scenario. That may or may not happen but I think like statistically it's actually really likely at least that the umbrella would blow away. Maybe it wouldn't blow into traffic but you know you could lose your umbrella if you just leave it outside like that. So uh, he closed the umbrella and brought it in and I hung it on this hook over here which is just about a, y a yard and a half away from the wood stove. And so after the massage, his umbrella was nice and dry because it was, you know, sitting next to the stove and, you know, ready to go out in the rain again. So like, is that uptight or is that just common sense? Is that really excessively anxious or uptight? I think that's just like using your brain. I mean, obviously don't leave an umbrella outside. It's just really annoying to me when people think that I'm overly anxious or overly concerned about things or worried too much. I feel like I have done that in the past and I can do that sometimes, but mostly I just keep it balanced. Like SI is just like an amazing tool for keeping shit in order and keeping things safe. These are really wonderful functions to have. It's true that they can get out of balance and, and out of whack on that any SI axis, but they can also really work together in harmony to just keep things running smoothly and there's nothing wrong with that. And I don't think that you should make fun of people for, you know, being 
being cautious and and putting this attention into SI because it's a good thing. It helps the world go around. SI is the antidote to chaos, right? Just like Jordan Peterson said, right? Isn't that the name of his book? The antidote to chaos. So he has lead in E and SI at the bottom. He's an ENTP and he's just all in on SI because it balances out that in E. So anyway, that's the horrible, terrible thing that happened in our house in the last 10 days and it just brought up this stuff about you know feeling triggered about people making fun of me for being overly cautious that's really all i have to say about that follow me for more si rants if you're into that sort of thing